Now, wherever you are, if you are in a cohort, I would like to invite you to stand. The graduates, the graduates stand. We welcome our main guest speaker. Please stand up. We welcome our guest main speaker. Now, I would like to invite our distinguished guest who will deliver the keynote address, mm -hmm. Bishop Godfrey Ona, the Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Nuska, Nigeria. He was appointed on April 4, 2013 as a bishop. He is well known for his dedication to education, pastoral care, and the promotion of peace and justice in his region, and of course, cuts across Africa. I would kindly ask you to clap when I'm inviting your excellency. You are most welcome. Well, thank you very much. And the computer is playing a trick on me. Just as you were inviting me to start, my laptop said Zoom can't detect my camera. So that is the context from which I'm working. Incidentally, I have nobody on hand now to try to help me reset or restart the computer. But I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Right. I think if you can hear me, in the meantime, I'm also trying to see if I can use my cell phone to get my face across. Good evening, everybody, and greetings from Nsoka in Nigeria. If you were in, a, in any doubt about where I am operating from, it is now confirmed to you that I'm in a rural diocese where digital communication cannot be taken for granted. And any time we succeed in communicating digitally, we thank God for it. I'm trying to see if this time around. Okay. okay. I think my, my face, face is on, is on the phone. phone. So, first of all, I thank the first of all, very hardworking organizers of this program. All the facilitators, lecturers, and the students who are now the graduates who have have the courage to take part in this novel journey, novel experience as family and as modern communicators. We are grateful to technology made possible by the use of human intelligence that allows us to exchange our ideas and our experiences in this unique way. I congratulate all of you. I do not know how I ended up. I had the president uh, welcoming everybody, mentioning me as one of the influential whatever. I don't know how I ended up with that description. Because as you can see, I'm just a local bishop in a rural diocese ministering to my faithful in a very simple, ordinary way. Incidentally, people request me to change the language, sometimes request me to change the language of my preachings. And I always reply to them that I have my faithful in front of me. And whatever I do, I do it as an ordinary bishop in a village diocese. And that is how important the digital world and digital technologies have become. 
when we think we are lost in a, a corner of the globe that nobody will take note of, digital technology throws us into the center of world attention, even in spite of ourselves. So it's just a, an indication to all of us that we can no longer take any of such things for granted. We are living in a new reality. I thank all of you again. I congratulate you. I thank Father Stan Hilo for continuously reminding me, in spite of my reluctance, not out of any bad will, but he understands why, and encouraging me to meet a group of people that is young people for whom I'm ready to sacrifice anything. I have spent most of my life with young people in the teaching apostolate. So I'm so happy to be involved in this ex exercise and in this experience. The theme of your of this, for discussion today about digital influences and empowering digital influences. I think it is it could not have been more apt. The people who undertook this program have been prepared, empowered, and are being sent as missionaries, so to speak. And we thank the Holy Father for encouraging the church to take new initiatives, not to just continue doing business as usual, but to explore new grounds even at the risk of being wounded, as the father from the communications, Castro was just telling us, reminding us that the Holy Father said he prefers a church that is solid and dirty and wounded while ministering to people, especially in difficult areas, to a church that remains clean and pure because it does not dare risk. And I will always uh, uh, remind some people and all of us that when we come before God, perhaps we may present to him our clean hands, having done everything to preserve ourselves from being solid by the world, stained by the world. And I may say, Father, you can see my hands are clean. And he may reply, yes, they are clean but they are also empty. So this is a risky business, but it is a business in which even though we may be stained, our hands may be soiled, they will definitely not be empty. Definitely. Within the context of the general theme of this discussion today, when Sister Jane asked me for the theme, of my reflection, of my conversation. By the way, that request came while I was on the way to a yet more rural parish in my diocese, wondering whether I would be able to pull out of my engagement and join you in time. I thank God I was able to do that. I asked myself whether there was any need to present another theme in addition or apart from the one you had already chosen. But when she asked that, I thought of something that could summarize what I want to share with you this afternoon. And that is the digital world, the paradox of a central place that is on the periphery. The digital world, the paradox of a central place on the periphery. With your formation and training and engagement all this while, I am sure that all you participants understand the digital world better than I do. By the way, I open a very short bracket to thank a young man like one of you, a priest of my diocese, who has devoted so much energy and time 
to make what I say and do as an ordinary pastor in a rural diocese get beyond the confines of my diocese. Father Felix Uche Asogwa, under the direction of the Director of Communications in our diocese, Father Emmanuel Asado. These young men are wonderful. They use very basic tools to produce results that I marvel at. And that is what encourages me to address you today. So when I talk about the digital world, I admit my limited knowledge or even total ignorance. So you know better. But something tells me that there are several ways of looking at the digital world. One way, I would like to outline, underline two. One way could be to look at the digital world, that is, digital technologies taken together as a tool for evangelization, for communication, for interaction, for human relationship, for governance, for many things, but as a tool or as a set of tools. And that is the sense in which the church more often sees the digital world, encouraging you young people especially to use the tools of modern technology provided by digital technologies, to use those tools to spread the message of the gospel. And that is a wonderful opportunity. What the digital world has made possible today, we could not imagine only a few years ago. Would any, can anybody imagine what would have happened if the Archbishop Fulton Sheen had had available to him what we have now as tools of the digital world. Could anybody imagine what he would have done with that? And we know how much the world got attracted to the message of the gospel because of the charism and dynamism of Pope St. John Paul II, who used the means, modern means of communication so effectively, and since all other, other popes since after him. And that just shows us what the digital world could do for the gospel and for the church as a tool. And that is not to be underestimated. Because when Jesus sent the disciples to the whole world, a few men without implements, who had only faith and passion, sent them to the whole world, to all the nations of the world. Of course, he knew they would require tools. They would require help. They require so many structures that would help them. Even those that now we cannot imagine, we are, must all have been included in the Lord's program of evangelization. So we thank God for those possibilities. So the digital world has too. The second part, however, for me, and perhaps also more important because it's more subtle, is the digital world as recipient of evangelization, not just as tool of evangelization. By this I mean that when the Lord said, go out to the whole world, and bring the good, proclaim the good news to the whole world, he thereby also includes the digital world. So then, my challenge to the graduates, or graduates, because they haven't received their title yet, and to all of us in this generation or this period in history is not just to see the digital world as tool, instrument of evangelization, no matter how well we're able to use it, 
but as recipient, as subject needing to be evangelized. And here I'm encouraged by the challenge of Pope Francis, Holy Father Pope Francis, who tells us to move out from the center and get to the periphery. And now here is the paradox that I'm talking about. And what do I mean by that? Digital technology is, as the Italians will say, ormai, it's already by now, at the center of human relationship, at the center of politics, and of course, definitely at the center of economy, of the economy of the world, and the center of communication. Which means it is, it has found itself at the center of our life, all of us without exception, whether we like it or not. Only recently, the Catholic Bishops of Nigeria, the conference, the entire conference, Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, had this, its second plenary meeting. And while interacting with the priests, diocesan priests of Nigeria, we are reflecting on the challenge of artificial intelligence, which is only one part of the digital world. And so that challenge of the earth, Artificial intelligence, jokingly, I used to tell my students in Rome, today I'm talking with you who are recording my lectures with your cell phones and laptops. By the time you become professors like me, you may be talking to human beings with microchips in their brains or in their bodies, and they would laugh it off. But we now, we now see how fast artificial intelligence is going. So nobody knows really what is becoming of human nature. Because incidentally, we have even noticed that there is a tendency to edge the church out of the entire discussion about values and about human dignity and about the nature of the human person. And by the time we are no longer clear about what the human person is and what his nature is, then postmodernism has had its full swing in maintaining where it maintains that there is no such thing as a human nature. Everything, every human being invents himself or herself. So, but that is where we are. And that is now where I see a challenge, an invitation to evangelize even the digital world. And this can only be done by those who even understand it. Paul couldn't have evangelized Rome. Peter couldn't have evangelized Rome. None of the other apostles could have evangelized anywhere if they didn't dare to go there and be persecuted and killed even. And some of us are still too shy of that world. Too shy, I must say. That is why I say that as far as the church and the message of the gospel is concerned, it does appear, and I'll be very glad to be wrong. Very, very glad to be wrong. It does appear that the digital world is on the periphery. But even it is, if it is, as, is on the periphery, as I presume it is in my own limited knowledge, we have to accept or take seriously the invitation of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, to dare to move out to the periphery. And let me warn that life in the periphery is vertiginous. There is no order. If you have experienced the slum, the slums in any city, then you will understand that evangelizing the periphery is not a joke. I want to use the example of one old South African arch archbishop. I met him in one of my trips in South Africa as a, I was visiting the, the seminaries affiliated to our university in Rome, the Urbaniana. So I met this retired archbishop. God forgive me, but I have forgotten his name, a holy man. I met him in the seminary in Johannesburg. 
in Pretoria, sorry. And as a typical Nigerian, I, there were two things I did regularly. Well, we are two Nigerian priests in that environment that time. Each time we met him, we would greet him the way Nigerians greet bishops. Good morning, my lord. Good morning, my lord. Good afternoon, my lord. Good evening, my lord. On one point, at one, on one day, on one occasion, he stopped, looked me straight in the eyes and said, look, my lord is in heaven. I don't know where yours is. And when I stepped back for him, to pass, he said, no, an open door should never be an obstacle. This archbishop, when he lent, I was from Rome. I said, you're from Rome. Very good, very good. What are you doing in South Africa? I said, I came on inspection of our university, our institutes. I'm very good again. Because, he said, it is good that we have Rome. The center of all the activities of the church. And he told me, you are old enough to know the gramophone. I said, of course I do. You remember the gramophone, he said. The record, the disc, always was placed on a pin. That pin has to be firm for the record to rotate. If it shifts, the record will go out of order. It will not play. But, the farther away you move from that pin, the faster the movement of the record. I said, Rome is that pin. It is good, it remains firm. But you guys in Rome should know that the farther away you move from Rome, the more, the faster we move in our own movement. That is what I remember now talking about the peripheries or the periphery. If we consider the digital world as periphery for the mission, for the evangelization, we should not expect the order we find in usual missionary spaces and structures. And part of that is the malleability, the flexibility of the digital world, but which in itself is an advantage or could be an advantage. Yesterday, or two days ago, one of the graduates walked into my office, providentially again still answering honor, Mr. Honor. I looked him up, sized him up and down, and he said he had a letter for me. I said, from whom? He told me it was from the Pan-African group, the ones organizing, the one organizing this, uh, this graduation. I said, what do you have to do with that group? He said, I'm one of those who will be graduating. I said, graduating in what? Now, why did I react that way? He didn't fall into my usual picture, mental picture of who should be graduating from a program like that. And that is the liberty and the flexibility and the adaptability of the digital world that becomes both a challenge and an advantage. While bracing up for the challenge, we must be able to use up the advantages. And here I believe those who formed these candidates, I believe they do, did a wonderful job. And I congratulate all of them and I especially my brother and brothers and sisters in Africa. You can now see whether you are in Rome, or you are in Nigeria, or in Kenya, in Mozambique, or in Cairo, that is in Egypt, or in the US with Father Stan, it does not really matter. We are all in one room now. And the way we are, Nobody is judging how the other person is dressed. Yes, of course, I'm talking to you, so I tried to be formally dressed. But one thing in Zoom encounters is that none of you knows whether I'm wearing a pair of shoes. And whether I'm wearing a pair of shoes or not becomes irrelevant. Now, this is the reality of the world we are called to evangelize now. And why is that evangelization important? 
And that would be my conclusion in this address or in this speech. The evangelization is important for me because the digital world is driving modern culture. And I was taught by my master, Batista Mondin, that the most important elements of culture are the values a culture promotes. Unless we as Christians, as Catholics, help shape the values that will be promoted by the digital world, we will eventually end up being destroyed by those values or disvalues, because sometimes they are disvalues. We are already at the thresholds, if not already in the, at the center of a civilization that Pope Benedict described as the dictatorship of relativism, where values are regarded as entirely subjective, and where the, what we hold as the most sacred truth is regarded only as an opinion. And when that happens, the consequences for morality and interpersonal relationships can only be imagined. And that is why we should never get tired of being part of the attempt to shape the values of the digital world, because those values drive modern culture. And here, I'm encouraged by what the father from the Dicastry for Communication said, this time it's not about numbers. It's not about how many followers. It's not about having one million or one billion followers. It's not followership. It's about the substance that we, that we transmit and the strength of our belief. So while congratulating you, I also ap appeal that your experience be shared as wide as possible through this unlimited space that we call the digital world, so that your brothers and sisters, young and old, may benefit from the wonderful uh, empowerment you are receiving today. No, and I want to remind Africans this, and I hope Europeans and Americans are listening to me here. Some Africans today, that's my experience in Nigeria, are telling young people that the church, Christianity, has destroyed our culture. That is a lie. The truth is that, yes, no culture encounters Christianity and remains the same. But Christianity brings out the best values in human beings and in human history. Check, historically, it was Christianity that revolutionized European values and made Europe what it is today. If decadence has started in Europe, it is precisely because some Europeans have started abandoning Christian values. So I'm appealing to fellow Africans to allow the gospel to shape our values, transform our values, and bring out the best that is in us. And if we do this through the digital world, then, as Father said, we are not just digital influencers, you are digital missionaries, and your mission, of course, is to bring the gospel to the end of the world, including the digital world. I don't know how many minutes I had, but a thank you I would want to add at this point. Thank you very much. It's more important than ever today. The message resonates with these graduates and all who are here today. As we move forward, let us carry the message in our hearts wherever we will be. Bishop from Nigeria, students Emeka Francis Ona, who 
will be empowering artisans by providing training and resources in shoemaking to enhance their skills and opportunities. And I can see the bishop who has been our keynote speaker presenting with honor the certificate to this student. His Excellency Bishop Godfrey Ona. Congratulations and thank you so much, Bishop, for that kind heart. And we pray that you may continue supporting the student so that he's able to realize his dreams.